You know, the 6.5 Creedmoor Karcher is renowned for its velocity, its accuracy, and its energy transfer on target at great distances. But coming out of a 24 inch barrel, what is the point in which this is considered just no longer lethal? Let's find out. Welcome back everybody, Clint here today with Classic Firearms, here to talk about, uh, not our current giveaway per se, but it's cartridge it is chambered in, the 6.5 Creedmoor. This spicy little guy is just that, spicy. 6.5 Creedmoor isn't exactly new to the game, it's been around for quite some time now, about the late you know, 2000s, 2008-ish, and there, Hornady designed this guy to pretty much compete with 7.62 NATO, 308 Winchester, and we're going to get down into the nitty gritty about what is this little guy's max effective range? So first of all, what are we considering the max effective range? What is effective? What are we defining as effective, right? Because if it's just to punch holes through paper, uh, then in that case, um, aim way up here and just start lobbing bullets down range and it should hit, right? Some of you guys keep making that dumb question. Yeah, and I'm gonna go ahead and call it dumb. Uh, well. It doesn't matter, right? Because would you would you still want to get hit by a bullet that's traveling 300 feet per second versus one that's traveling 2,000 feet per second at any distance? I don't want to get shot at all. Is the quite simple, quite simply the answer. Uh, but I will say this: that's not the point of the video. The point of the video is trying to figure out, well, what's the max lethal effective or the max lethal range for the cartridges we're talking about. So far we've only talked about 5.56, and I've covered some things that I'm gonna talk about really quick too, because I think we just need to remember a little bit, right? So I said in the first video that the general consensus to provide a, what I wanna call an effective energy transfer onto target is about 220 to 300 foot pounds of energy for a self-defense role. The FBI stated that it only takes about, give or take, just a little bit less than 60 foot-pounds of energy to generate what's called a disabling wound. And that's from a study done like in the 1970s. So take that with what you will. But today, general consensus is 220 to 300 foot-pounds of energy for self-defense. Okay, cool. What is self-defense, you ask? Well, it depends on the situation you're in. If somebody's robbing you, self-defense. If somebody's invading your country, Self-defense, am I right? So, might be a couple feet, might be a couple hundred yards. You never know. Anyway, continuing on with that thought process, at what point do we get to what I'm going to call 260 foot-pounds of energy with 6.5 Creedmoor? As you can imagine, with the 5.56 cartridge, uh, this is going to beat that by a lot. Now, is it fair to... Uh, to compare the 6.5 Creedmoor to the 5.56 cartridge? Absolutely not. Uh, you're talking about AR-15 versus AR-10 actions. You're talking a much bigger bullet, larger in diameter, larger, you know, just more powder, more everything going into the 6.5 Creedmoor than the, you know, cute little 5.56 22 caliber bullet that it is, right? So that's okay. We're gonna do all of this on 308 as well and we'll compare that too. But like I said, we've only put up the, st the stats so far for 5.56. So let's hop into the 6.5 Creedmoor. Like I said, 6.5 Creedmoor has been around for a little bit of time now and we have found, thanks to Hornady, who provide this awesome little chart uh, for the 140 grain boat tail hollow point ammunition that they have, uh, we took that and ran with it, literally. Uh, and you'll see exactly what I mean here. Okay, we didn't actually like, you know, run around a track with this chart, but at the muzzle, what I have here for the Hornady 140 grain bow tail hollow point, at the muzzle, you're generating about 2,690 feet per second, fast, all right? Your energy at that point in time is 2,249 feet per second. At 400 yards, uh, actually, you know what? I got 500 yards on here. Let's just go with 500 yards. At 500 yards, you're looking at 2,000, or I'm sorry, 1,972 feet per second. 1,972 feet per second. That is still a very fast moving guy. At 500 yards, you're looking at 1,209 foot pounds of energy being delivered to your target. Remember what we said about 556, uh, to deliver just 1,000 foot pounds of energy onto the target, it's right around 100, 100 yards. 100 yards is pretty much 
it for that thousand foot pounds of energy transfer uh, for the 556 cartridge. 500 yards, we're still way above, <laughs> still way above uh, 1,000 foot pounds of energy, which I think is pretty awesome. Keep in mind too that the 6.5 Creedmoor cartridge is still maintaining supersonic speeds at 1,200 yards. But how much energy is actually being transferred to the target at that distance? So with that in mind, with this chart that Hornady has come up with, we have found, or I shouldn't say come up with, they're the ones that created this bullet. Uh, they're, they should have the most accurate information about this cartridge. So we took the stats that we have on this chart. We found that your energy or your foot pounds of energy is actually decreasing by half a percent for every 100 yards, starting at about 12% or so. So we took that and we said, okay, we can estimate, rough estimate, about what our energy transfer would be at 1,200 yards. I figured if it's still maintaining supersonic velocity at that point, which keep in mind, uh, supersonic speeds are 1,126 feet per second. That's still very fast, especially at 1,200 yards. That's still something that I'm not gonna wanna get hit with ever. Even if it's thrown at me, I still wouldn't want to get hit with it. But uh, anyway, so with that in mind, with this and that trajectory of energy and how it downgrades, we found that at 1,200 yards, it's still generating 356 foot-pounds of energy, which according to the general consensus of anywhere between 220 to 300 foot-pounds of energy being necessary for a self-defense situation. Again, everybody's situation might be different, especially depending on what part of the world you're in. Uh, we found that it is still very capable at 1,200 yards. So when does it finally start to drop and when does it finally get into that, uh, you're just not quite there. 220 to 300 foot-pounds of energy. Well, continuing again with that math, just another 100 yards. At 1,300 yards, 270 foot-pounds of energy is being delivered by the 6.5 Creedmoor cartridge, 140 grain, Botel hollow point. As long as our math is right, that should be the statistic there. With that being said, it's not necessary to go any further because then we're out of our, we already know through our theory here that we would be out of our ballpark, out of our range for self-defense, uh, foot-pounds of energy being delivered. So 1,300 yards is what we've come up with. With that being said, what do you guys think? Personally, I know for sure that this is a very capable cartridge. I've seen videos of people engaging targets out to over 2,500 yards, 2,500 yards with this. And if I had the mental capacity and the time to come up with how much energy is being delivered on target, I would have to first figure out uh, what exact round was being used because I would need to know the parameters and everything around that round uh, because I doubt they were doing that with a standard 140 grain Botel cartridge. They could have been. I mean, you aim your gun high enough, it'll probably keep going for a while, I guess. Uh, especially if you had a nice little tailwind. There you go. But uh, anyway, I think 1,300 yards is a general and easy enough number to come up with with these with this type of math to say that's probably where we're at with the 6.5 Creedmoor cartridge. I am very actually eager to do the same type of setup with 7.62 NATO. We've got the numbers, again, thanks to Hornady that they offer, offer this to the public. Uh, so we can come up with just about any of that and it's available to you guys as well. So double check our math. Uh, it took you know a couple of us with me over here having question marks in my head. I'm not a math guy, I'm just a trigger puller. I'm not even good at that. So what do you guys think? I'd be curious to hear from all of you. Put it the, oh, other thing, 24 inch barrel. <laughs> All of this is being shot through a 24 inch barrel. I think that's a pretty big thing to say there uh, because for instance, we were running the SMB ammunition uh, through this guy here and SMB is using a 21, uh, 21.75 inch barrel. It's, I, it's weird, I don't know why that's, it's a weird, it's a weird barrel length, what can I say? But 21.75, just I wrote it down just so we have these types of differences. 140 grain full metal jacket 
uh, boat tail through for an S&B out of a 21.75 inch barrel. You're looking at a muzzle velocity of 2,657 feet per second, foot pounds of energy 2,194. Compare that to the 24 inch 140 grain boat tail hollow point Hornady, then you've got 2,690 feet per second velocity, 2,249 foot pounds of energy. Barrel length matters. We have found that out multiple times now, depending on the caliber. Nine millimeter, maybe not as much. Five, five, six, definitely. Uh, 300 blackout, yes. Not as much as five, five, six. But put it this way, the faster the round, I wanna say, I think right now our consensus can be the smaller the projectile and diameter, I think barrel length matters more if it's got a smaller projectile and more powder, I, I think, obviously. But uh, anyway, Great, I think I can leave it off there, guys. Again, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Is our math completely off? Do you think that the 6.5 Creedmoor cartridge is actually much more capable at greater distances than just the 1,300 yards? Again, keep in mind, the cartridge we are talking about here, which again is the 140 grain bow tie hollow point by Hornady, all right? So I'll leave it off there, guys. I know all the 6.5 Creedmoor talk is all like, you know, fun and exciting and interesting and stuff and whatnot, but, Probably not as fun as exciting as the actual gun that shoots them, like the Savage MSR left-hand side charging AR-10 that we're currently giving away. Still has its standard charging handle, but that left side charging handle just really gets me. I really like that a lot. Leupold VX 5HD. This is an awesome optic that we've paired up with it as well, getting out the 20 power on that as well with the Scalarworks mount. Magpul accessories all around as far as the precision rifle stock, which is one of my favorite stocks. Cool little grip as well, just their standard, uh, I think the MIAD, MMA, mission adaptable interface, whatever. It's their grip, uh, basic and works very well. And then of course, one of my favorite types of bipods is the Magpul polymer bipod. Lightweight, sturdy, does the job, rocks, leans, twists, does everything you need it to do, and is, uh, well, easy to use, which is great for me because I need it to be simple. Also too, adjustable gas system on it, so if you want to run that in any type of way you want, you can maybe throw a suppressor on it, but after talking about all these velocities and numbers on the 6.5 Creedmoor, it's probably not the best cartridge to suppress. I still want to do it though. So anyway, guys, we'll leave it off there. Don't forget to utilize the code word MSR to get yourself a couple hundred extra entries. As always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless, and we'll see you next time at classicfirearms.com.